In the previous video, I defined curvature, which described curving. Let me continue with the definitions. There are a couple more important ideas to finish the description of movement in space. So let me start with a parametric curve. The normal to the curve is the derivative of the unit tangent, capital T prime divided by its length. This is another vector, like the tangent vector. Where the tangent pointed in the direction of motion, the normal points in the direction of curving. Knowing curvature is not just knowing the number, it is also knowing the direction. Finally, I can calculate a third unit vector. The binormal b is the cross product of the unit tangent and the normal which I just defined, which is also a unit vector. These three vectors give a complete picture of the local movement of a curve. I've drawn the three vectors on this diagram. At any moment in time, the unit tangent capital T points in the direction of movement. The normal capital N points in the direction of curvature, and the binormal capital B is the normal to the plane of curvature. It defines the plane in which the curve is momentarily curving. This plane is called the oscillating plane. I said in the previous video that in addition to curving motion, there is also twisting motion. This is motion that changes the oscillating plane, the plane of movement. Torsion is the measure of this. Since the binormal B is the normal to the oscillating plane, change in the binormal should affect torsion. And indeed it does. But I have to momentarily go back to the special parameterization of, uh, by arc length because torsion is independent of the speed of motion, much like curvature was. The torsion, written tau of s, is the length of the derivative of the binormal. Like curvature, the binormal can be calculated in an arbitrary parameterization by this formula. Tau of t is ne negative 1 divided by the length of the tangent times the dot product of the derivative of the binormal and the normal. A bit strange, and I won't do a proof that it works, but this does calculate torsion. I've defined a great deal in these videos. The notes summarized all these definitions for easy access, but here is just a list. The tangent, the length of the tangent, which is the speed, the unit tangent, the derivative of the unit tangent, the curvature, the normal, the binormal, and the torsion. There's a bunch of vectors and a bunch of scalars, but all put together, they describe movement in space. Let me return back to the idea of movement in space. I've defined three scalars, speed, the length of the tangent written v, curvature written kappa, and torsion written tau. If all are zero, there's no motion at all. If the speed is constant, but there is no curvature or torsion, the motion is a straight line. If curvature and speed are constant, but there is no torsion, the motion is a circle. And finally, if all three are constant, the motion is a helix. These four cases are the archetypical cases, and hopefully they help you to understand these three concepts that describe motion in space.